back everyone. So we're back in the lab. We got the flow hood on. It's a little loud in here. But uh, we're going to jump back in with the grain spawn today. Move that to substrate and get ready to fruit some mushrooms. So let's get started. All right, guys. So today we're going to start off with we're actually going to do like a small recap. We're going to make some grain spawn really quick because we don't have enough of the cements. So we're just uncovering our sterilized grain, making sure everything is sterile before we open it. Now we're gonna sterilize our knife by heating it with a flame torch. Always be careful when you're using isopropyl alcohol in a Bunsen burner and or torch at the same time. You can very easily set your hands or your equipment on fire. So just be mindful of the order in which you do things. Uh, also be mindful of not reaching over your cups. You see I'm kind of doing like a, a crab-like motion where I reach around the cup and inoculate it from the back. So I don't have to hover over it too much, only my tools are really over it. Just throwing some chunks in there. Um, I know those plates are very clean. They've been growing out for like a month now, so uh, normally I wouldn't take from the edges of plates because if contamination were to get into the plates, they would come in from the edges and fall down to the sides. But we've been watching that for long enough that I wasn't really worried about that. So we just went in, threw it all in there. Next up, we're moving on to a fruiting block formation. A fruiting block is substrate and grain spawn. And just as the mycelium colonized the grain, we're going to use the grain spawn to colonize the substrate, and then they will be ready to fruit after that. So when breaking up your uh, substrate or your grain spawn, because the grain spawn can really stick together if you leave it colonizing for too long, it'll start sticking to the glass. Um, it's best to like give it a little, uh, like a firm tap. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable with uh, using your hand, you can use a tennis ball and kind of bounce it on the tennis ball to break it up. Works very well. Whether you choose to use your hand or tennis ball, always check the glass to make sure it isn't cracked first. Sometimes you can have a mason jar crack while it's in the pressure cooker. I always check my jars right after they come out to make sure that they're okay. So you can see I'm doing a one-two ratio. One being the grain spawn and two being the substrate. The substrate being used here is called Master's Mix. It's 50% soy hulls and 50% oak pellets. Soy hulls help get a better yield. And we use that for a lot of gourmets. This is lion's mane. And we don't actually have an impulse sealer for these bags in the lab yet, but that's totally fine because even at home for the last like two years, I've been sealing my bags with micropore tape. Then I roll it down and then tape it closed. And I've never had any issues with using this method to seal the bags, no contamination or anything. And so we're just finishing up this bag here and then we're going to move on to the next project just making sure there's a good seal and so when you shake your bags try to shake them from the bottom just to make sure you're getting all of it and I like to make sure that my blocks are a nice block shape gives consistent results when you're fruiting and make things a little more predictable when you're looking into the bag to see their progress so now we're moving on to that sidewalk reishi that we've been talking about a lot and so we have a lot of grain spawn you can't even tell that that's grain anymore because the mycelium is just completely overtaking the the grain in there so what we're gonna do is i've only done this a few other times but it'll be fun to watch we're gonna take some substrate that is low in nutrient and we're going to cover the top of the grain and then we're just gonna let the mycelium fruit straight up. And so the reason we're putting this casing layer on top of the grain is because grain is high in nutrient. 
if we just put this out to fruit like this, it'll probably contaminate really fast. But coco choir is naturally antifungal and it will prevent anything from contaminating the nutrient underneath. The mycelium will colonize the coco choir and then they will just use the nutrient underneath to fruit on top of the coco choir. So we'll see that really soon. It should only take about a week or two to see those results. Really looking forward to that. I was thinking about putting another cup on top of these cups and letting them fruit within it. We're going to do exactly the same thing. This is also the sidewalk reishi. We're going to do this in a taller jar as well, just for some variety. You can see the inside of the jar here. It's just the mycelium and the grain. And you can tell when the grain is ready to go when the mycelium are leaving the grain to go look for something else. You can see they're like climbing up the jar because they can feel the air coming through the filter patch on the lid. That's when they're more than ready. They're ready before that, but if you really want them to like get going really fast right after throwing other things in there, you just wait for them to start looking on their own and that's your sign to move on to the next stage and i always want my substrate to be like nice and flat like a nice flat surface so you can tap the bottom of the jar and that will flatten any of the substrate in there we're going to do the same thing here so there was a lot of grain spawn that was stuck to the glass that we couldn't get out so I just decided to add the excess substrate the excess cocoa choir into that jar I'm gonna let them colonize that and then they'll fruit out it's the same exact thing most of the grain spawn will be covered by the cocoa choir and hopefully that's enough to allow them to get like a nice fruiting So this time we're going to take the substrate, this is master's mix, and then we're also going to take the grain spawn, we're going to mix it in the bag, and then we're going to pour them back into the jars that they came from. And so that's a 1-1 ratio, because we use one jar of each, we're going to put them back. This is lion's mane by the way, and this will let them colonize really fast because they're totally mixed together. So probably be fully colonized in like two days and that will set them on a faster path to fruiting and then we can fruit them right out of the jar and have some nice lion's mane jars. So to address the, the sterility of the bags, so anything that says that it's food safe is safe to use. You're not gonna get contamination from like a Ziploc bag or some plastic ramekins that have been like individually wrapped or uh, if they have like a stack of 100 that's been wrapped up, those are really sterile and use those straight out of the bag. But once you open the bag, they're not sterile anymore. So make sure you open them within sterile conditions and then you can do exactly what I'm doing here without any issues. But yeah, this has pretty much been the whole process I know we covered a lot there's a lot of info to go over but we're gonna be visiting these jars again like multiple times and we'll be making more as we do more projects make sure when you do make 
a jar or a bag that you're leaving at least 30% of the total capacity of the container open just to allow gas exchange. If you don't, the fungi are going to have a hard time breathing and you'll probably get a bacterial contamination after a while. As always, make sure that you label and date your projects. A lot of these look the same up until they go to fruit, so make sure that you know where everything is. But yeah, guys, that's been it. Uh, this has been Shay from Microdex Mushrooms. Signing out. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, Microdex here. If you guys want to support the channel and save some money on some plant and fungi supplies, go and check out the Plant Cell Technology Store and use the code Microdex to save 10%.